Barbie is a billion dollar box office hit. It's been a long time since a movie has had such wide ranging appeal. Women and men, boys and girls from the ages of 8 to 80 have dressed in pink and rushed to see Margot Robbie and her posse of Barbies dismantle the patriarchy. But not everyone is giving Barbie rave reviews. Sky News All-Stars Piers Morgan, Esther Kraku and Megan Kelly look beneath the sparkly exterior to question whether Barbie is as uplifting and empowering as the marketing machine has made us believe. There's no denying Greta Gerwig's Barbie is the movie of a generation. Fun, empowering and pushing a positive message, audiences across the globe have lapped it up. Barbie has grossed over one billion American dollars at the global box office, making it the first film by a solo female director to record the achievement. The film, directed by Greta Gerwig and starring Margot Robbie, hit screens just last month and has been number one at the box office every week in Australia and the United States since it's released. Now Margot Robbie jokingly predicted the movie would surpass the major milestone in a promotional interview in the lead up to the film's release. And I was like, and now you've got Barbie and Greta Gerwig. And I think I told them they'd make a billion dollars. Um, which, uh, you know, maybe I was overselling, but we had a movie to make, okay? But not everyone is buying into the hype. Popular commentators like Ben Shapiro have slammed the film for pushing an anti-male agenda. The premise of the film, politically speaking, is that men and women are on two sides of the divide and they, and they hate each other. All men in the film are either bigots or idiots. Now is Barbie a smash the patriarchy feminist film? Yes it is. The real world and all the men in it are shown to be universally, irredeemably horrible. Sky News All-Star Piers Morgan agrees, asking why empowering women must be about trashing men. The core focus of Barbie is, oh God, the patriarchy. The word is used endlessly in the movie, even though most people, including me actually, have no real idea what patriarchy really means. I guess it means all men are evil until they can prove otherwise. Women are their oppressed victims. Anyone disagrees is obviously a misogynist. Barbie's message is that the only solution to all this dreadful patriarchal state of affairs is obviously for women to rule the world, and preferably do so on their own without horrible men to ruin it or ruin them and their lives. So they want to do it on their own. There's a slight genetic problem with that though. What happens in like a hundred years? It's all over. If there is a plot, it boils down to something like this. Barbie lives in Barbie world with many other virtues of Barbies, including a transgender Barbie, a disabled Barbie, and a black female president Barbie. These Barbies are all powerful, while the Kens obviously are all second class, useless halfwits. Then Barbie and Ken are transported to the real world where, wait for it, Men are in charge of everything and are largely despicable. Barbie is immediately objectified. One ghastly man shouts, give us a smile, blondie, which is a phrase that hasn't actually been used in the real, real world since probably the Second World War. Mattel, the owner of Barbie, is represented as a macho misogynist outfit with an all-male board of alpha dogs. The unfortunate reality is that Barbie was invented by a woman called Ruth Handler, who ran the company for 30 years as president. To this day, Mattel has five women on its 12-person board. Now, without spoiling all of the movie, all the stunning conclusion, he does all that for itself, of course. Ken returns to Barbie world filled with patriarchal malice, prompting a battle of the sexes in which all of the empowered Barbies have to unite to defeat the evil idiot Ken. So my question about all this is why? Can't we just get along? I thought feminism was about equality. Why does empowering women always have to be about trashing men? The real world I live in is full of confident, high-achieving women who probably will laugh at such a derisory misrepresentation of their supposed lowly status in life compared to men. And if anybody made a movie which depicts women as Barbie depicts men, well, they wouldn't just be cancelled. They'd be tarred and feathered and marched through the streets. Sky News All-Star Esther Krakow agrees, saying it was a giant catfish of a film. It's 
I suspected this would happen when we started having a conversation about whether Barbie is a feminist icon. And I just thought to myself, why does Barbie need to be a feminist icon? Anyone who's grown up with Barbies knows that she's just a doll that girls like to play with. And then 10 seconds into the film, I'm just being shoehorned with this ideology, this, you know, patriarchy this mm. and feminism that. And I'm just thinking it's a giant catfish of a film. It's like going on a date wanting to see J-Lo and then, I don't know, at the end you see someone like Lizzo, for instance. I'm just, it's its completely unnecessary. Why can't we just have a film about dolls? The people that made this film have never seen any of the other Barbie animals. No! Films because it's completely unrelated. It's a giant catfish. And I just think- And all the Kens, and no offense, Chris, we're gonna to come to you in a moment. All the Kens are, are so, dumb. They're such so, dumb dweebs. It's like so they've come off the set of Love Island or something. But this is the problem. They're so incompetent. And it's like, how can, and at the end of the film, they try and say, oh, but we're all humans and we're all equal. Okay, but you've, paced, you've painted half of humanity as incompetent halfwits. Okay. So exactly how does that work? <clears throat> and Sky News All-Star Megan Kelly also agreed, saying the movie's focus on the patriarchy is irrelevant because the patriarchy no longer exists. Uh, from where I stand, it looks like the atonement tour. Barbie's atoning for her 40 years of being so disproportionately voluptuous that no woman in the world could live up to this or have a figure that way. They've already introduced all the diverse Barbies and the, you know, disabled Barbies. And that's fine, the representation, I get it. But this is like they've been on the tour of like trying to rehab Barbie's image. And this is the ultimate exercise in that where she realizes outside of Barbie world, she's not the one in control. She's got to deal in the real world where the men are in charge. The patriarchy reigns. Um, sure, tell that to any white guy trying to apply to college across the United States or Australia or anyplace else right now. They don't feel like they're in charge anymore. They actually feel like they need to hide their race and their gender if they want to get accepted into any uh, MBA program or bank on Wall Street, or you could go down the list. Um, it may still have the capital P patriarchy in the view of Barbie, but for those of us living in the real world already, Barbie, the patriarchy's been long gone, and it's a really tough time actually to be a guy. But host Paul Murray warns conservatives against publicly berating the film, as it will only serve to increase hype, publicity, and ultimately ticket sales, giving the loud minority exactly what they want. Barbie is the biggest movie in the world at the moment, and that really pisses some people off. Their main hot take is that this is a Trojan horse for the radical left. But my friends, don't fall for that trap. Well, it might be true. It plays right into the hands of the film's champions. You see, you can't change anyone's mind about this or any other movie, no matter how hard you blow up. In fact, the louder you scream, the more tickets they will buy. For the record, it's not a new trick. For decades, rock bands used to call up the police to attend their shows in the hope that they would be arrested for being offensive. This infamy would then make sure that the band could tell their fans the only way to get back at the man was to buy a ticket to see them do it again in another city. They get rich, you have a good time, feeling like you've changed the world. But of course, you didn't. We can all have opinions on pop culture, be the music we like, the books we read, or the movies that we devour. But you can't deny cultural impact. And Barbie has had a global cultural impact, first as a toy and now as a movie. In fact, I think you lose your ability to win people over on things that have nothing to do with pop culture if you insult the things that they love to watch. RMIT researcher Dr. Natalia Ilishima has slammed the movie, saying it's not only bad for men, but also misrepresents women. So if anyone thinks that this movie is about female empowerment or any sort of equality, gender equality, they are kidding themselves. What this movie is about is shaming men, misandry, misandry, misandry. <laughs> word, word I learned, and a gender role dictatorship. <laughs> so both sides are actually um, some sort of disadvantaged. Well, Ken doesn't have any gender roles so representing all men. Mm. They, they inferior, useless and unintelligent or villains. So at best they're useless. And with females, they also are restricted to one single gender role being ambitious, uh, career-oriented females. So there are no stay-at-home mums in the film? I, uh, I haven't watched oh, the film. I've got to say, one. I've got no desire to watch the film, so I am relying <laughs> on the account of others. But uh, So there's one 
there stay at home mum. There is one pregnant Barbie. Okay. And even that one is being shamed. So the passing by comment, oh, pregnant Barbie, weird. I thought we discontinued it. <laughs> so even uh, being a, a mother is shamed. So anything to do with traditional gender roles. So the freedom of choice, what you want to do, what you want to be, is completely removed, not only from men, but from women as well. Mm. So what kind of equality is that when you don't have any freedom of choice? And Piers Morgan uncovers the gender bias in the film, saying if the situation were reversed, there would be uproar. My problem is with the argument it promotes, I'm allowed to criticise that. That's called free speech, right? I'm not trying to silence And I'm allowed Barbie. to call you a snowflake for criticising. Yes, you are, but you're missing the point about why I'm criticising it. I'm criticising the hypocrisy. If you flipped it around, Esther, if I made a, a, a movie which lampooned women like this from a very male dominated position all hell well, would break the thing this. is it is hypocrisy i take offense with the, f the fact that you think this is a comedy it wasn't funny at all and also there is there is something like this that actually mocks women it's called a dave Chappelle special and every time he comes up with a new special we need to cancel him because he's punching down on the poor women despite the lively debate there's no denying the barbie movie has been a box office behemoth but one satirical website says barbie should be more woke well, we love our friends at the Babylon Bee, and they've hopped on the Barbie train. And I know a lot of people have said that Barbie is too woke. But what if Barbie is actually not woke enough? Yeah, let's meet the new version of Barbie's boyfriend, Ken. Take it away, Babylon Bee. Barbie's boyfriend is getting a much needed and way more inclusive makeover. Introducing... <laughs> you know he's pregnant and his beard lets you know he's a man because men can get pregnant just like women in fact there's no definition of women we literally have no idea what a woman is pregnant Ken does all the normal things every birthing person does like chest feed then hide his breasts with chest binders he rocks baby to sleep with his supple masculine arms and Ken being a man and therefore a good driver can even put baby in the back of the car for a fun drive around town